We made Gil's shirt in the last video. And we are going to finish Gil. Yeah, finish him today. We are going to work on Gil's head, his pants, his belt, and his gloves. And yeah, I decided to just do it. Back to back, day after day. Finish this guy, because I got a ton of stuff to do for the next series and I don't want to just sit on this project for next few weeks. So, here goes. So I start with his cap. There is no real logic to any of this. Just put some papers on top of his head and start tracing things until we sort of have something. I ended up with a long strip for the middle and half circles for the two sides. Then trace them onto fabric. Any fabric will do because I'm going to paint everything later anyway. I got this fabric at a secondhand store. It might have been a tablecloth. I don't know. But why spend a lot of money on fabric when I'm not making something for a real person? But thinner fabric is better because everything feels thick when you are making something that's only 11 inches tall. Even just a few months ago, when I was making Tiffany, I was like, I'm dead certain I'm going to screw this up. But now, I think I'm getting the hang of it. Some of the things I learned include, like thinking about symmetry when making the patterns, simplify the patterns if possible, most things that apply to human clothes will not apply here, such as seams. You also can't leave one inch seams, which seems to be the usual standard, because one inch is also the size of, like, their head. You can chip it out on fabric, and also you can paint on most things, because I will most likely never wash these clothes. So this is how his cap looks like now. I attached a strip of fabric at the bottom to finish his cap. I doubt you'll ever make these yourself, but if you do, just sew really, really slowly, like three stitches and stop, three stitches and stop. Put your foot on the pedal like just barely, and just be careful in general. Of course, I searched for other YouTube videos on how to sew something and I watched them like pressing their pedal and stitching so fast and it's almost satisfying to watch them go through like an entire blanket in a few seconds. Yeah, that's not going to happen here. We are working with just a few inches of fabric with like teeny weeny seams. So after sewing, then taking out some stitches, then sew some more, then take out wrong stitches because something doesn't look balanced, then sew some more, which are all edited out. Then this is how the cap turns out. Looks symmetric enough. Next step is to paint this cap brown. Then we have to curl his hair. So I contemplated on how I would go about doing this. I watched someone using a hot iron on doll's hair. It must have been a very special kind of hot iron because they will melt the doll's hair. I tried it. I tried hot water before too. It doesn't work. I also tried hairspray on Mal before. It's kind of iffy. It doesn't really hold. So, how will I curl this guy's hair? So I decided to braid his hair. Braid, then leave it overnight. We sort of get natural looking curl. So I figured, that's what I'll try. If this looks like it was a tedious work, yes, it was even more tedious than it looks. I stopped filming at this point, turned on some more YouTube videos on the background and just braided his entire hair through the night before I fell asleep in total exhaustion. So this is how all those braids came out. He actually kind of looks good in his cap too. I actually kind of like this look. Had I not been making Gil and some random pirate instead, I would have left the hair this way. But Gil doesn't have dreadlocks. 
we wanted to create some curls. So, believe it or not, I unbraided all of these braids. But before that, I put some watered down glue on his hair because I was afraid the hair will just return back to straight. It turns out, unbraiding his hair was even harder than braiding them. All those braids, I braided the night before. Yeah, I spent an equal amount of time, if not more, unbraiding it. And I watched some more YouTube videos on someone sewing something. You know how this works? Watch one sewing video and then you're given a thousand other sewing videos to watch. Here's Gil with his hair undone. There are definitely some curls, but not the kind of curl I was thinking of. He still looks like he has dreadlocks, but just poofier. I contemplated what more I can do, but I decided to stop. I could make things worse. A lot worse. I trimmed his hair down a little bit to get rid of the straight ends, and then I was done with his hair. So, moving on to his pants. I started out with a pair of jeans that I made a long time ago. Then I added those leather patches. Two knee patches, one long pocket piece, and a thigh strap. Then I painted them brown and stitched the seams. One of the things I always felt like a hindrance when I'm making these story videos was the lack of characters. Especially these minor characters or side characters or completely irrelevant background characters. They are never made into dolls, mainly because they will never sell. But I need them. So starting this year, I decided to make them and we are still in that process. But another thing that I always felt like was missing was the background, the stage. I can find lots of pictures on castles and gardens and rooms and forests, but when it comes to specific things, especially fantastical things, it's next to impossible to find the images that I want. In the beginning of the year, I thought, maybe I'll paint them. I will draw them. But that idea kind of shriveled up. My stories are epic. Epic as in one big continuing storyline. One big universe creation. They are all part of one big continuing storyline which are loosely divided into what I call series. So if I make something, I can use them continuously. So it makes sense to invest the time in making them. But I never quite had the courage to make these stages and props before. But I guess everything kind of changed this year, so why not? There's one big ring of some sort on his thigh strap. For this, I used a foam sheet. I cut out a circle, cut out the inner circle to make the ring. Then I painted it with black acrylic paint, then I glued it to the strap. So anyway, back to what I was saying, I'm thinking of making a few custom stages. One of them, which I already mentioned, is the pirate ship, but I'm also thinking of building Mal and Ben's castle. I think I also need Celia and Freddy's voodoo house, voodoo doctor's house. I've used some generic images before, but I think I want something a little more specific. Once the pocket thigh strap and knee patches are done, I painted the pants to make it look more worn out. I used some yellow brown, dark brown, black and gray paint. Paint both front and back. I also dabbed some gold paint on the thigh strap ring because it was too black. Then I dabbed some brown paint all over the leather patches to make them look more leathery and worn out. And then glued them all to the pants. In a perfect world, of course, I can make everything like with a snap of fingers. Making things take too much time. I also have to prioritize what I should make first. I can probably get one big project done this year. Maybe two if I can squeeze them in. Or maybe I'll get them all started at the same time. And maybe they will all kind of get finished toward the end of the year. 
I think I can reuse the ship for different people by switching out the sails and such, like black sails for pirates, white sails for Naomi's cargo ship. But Mal and Ben's castle would be just that. It's theirs. Likewise, Celia and Freddy's voodoo house is so unique that I don't think I can swap them out. Gil's pants also have some texture. So I used some embroidery thread and sewed rows of thread on his knee area. And then I painted them light brown. As for Evie, I don't think she needs a house or a castle. I think just random generic images will be fine for her, but I think she will need her boyfriend and seriously get started on her fashion business. Like it's not some background story. I was thinking of actually turning that into a concept. Carlos, if you think about it, he's also the son of a fashion designer. Fashion seems to be a big concept, which I've been ignoring, mainly because I have no idea what I'm going to do for their so-called end result, the clothes. This is how the pants turned out. It's time to make his belt. I've been staring at his belt for many hours. And I decided that his buckle is a cow's skull. At first I thought it was a teapot, but that totally doesn't make any sense. Gil has nothing to do with Bell. And his father, being a hunter, I think a cow's skull makes sense? Cow or a bull? To make the skull, I used some polymer clay. I started out with a big flat round of clay, then I cut out to make two horns and a rectangular area for the head. Then I take out a thin strip of clay from the center to make the mouth area. Then I bake it for 15 minutes. Then I paint it gold. I also painted the eyes blue. Then it looked too blue, so I lightly layered gold paint on top of the eyes. For the belt strap, I cut out a long strip of black tape, which I painted brown with acrylic paint. To assemble the belt, I glued the skull to the belt strap. While I was making this, it just struck me how much effort goes into making Gil's costume. Not just his costume, but everyone else's too. When I look at his costume, I'm like, cool, in a passing thought. But when I try to make them myself, there are just so many parts. This is just what I think I can observe from pictures. I have no idea what more went into his costume. Not to mention, I simplified parts I cannot make out clearly or just impossible to replicate. Just even this skull, I'm making it with clay. Was this made with like real bronze or maybe steel in real life? That would require like a blacksmith or metalsmith or maybe it was just a foam that's painted to look like bronze. I guess I'll never know. But now I have a new appreciation for these costume makers in real life. I cut out a small piece of green fabric which I tied to the belt. I can't find the same fabric, obviously, so I used just some random green parts of the fabric. And this belt is done. That was just the belt number one. He's wearing another wider, broader belt. Apparently, pirates loved to wear lots of belt. To make this belt, I cut out a strip of black tape, then I painted brown. Then I waited for it to dry, then I painted again with some gold paint. While I wait for the paint to dry, I made the belt buckle. To make the buckle, I used a paper clip. I basically left the inner loops intact, but cut out the last part of the loop. I tried to make the round parts more rectangular. Then what you're left is a frame with an inner prong. I painted the paper clip with gold paint so it doesn't look so paper clippy. Then you attach the belt strap to the inner bar. Then you're left with two frames outside, which will act like a real belt. The belt goes in one end and out the other. The 
there are 5 holes vertically in the real belt, but that would be almost impossible with the size of this belt. So I reduced them down to 3 holes. Once the holes are made, I painted them with gold paint to make the holes a little more visible. So anyway, back to what I was saying about plans for Evie. I kind of want to start her designer collections. I had that idea for many years now, but I couldn't quite make it work because I couldn't make those clothes. And moreover, I don't know anything about designing clothes. Like I go to the store, I look at clothes, I look at the price tags and decide if I want to buy them or not. That's about the extent of my knowledge in fashion industry. But Evie, being a fashion designer and such, I kind of want her to start her own collection because that's what fashion designers do, right? Except I have no idea how something like that actually happens. The final step is the gloves. His mismatched gloves. To make the gloves, I make two long tubes by gluing just the one end. I'm going to use the velcros to close the other end. And I also make small holes for the thumb to poke out. Then I paint one glove yellow brown and the other one darker brown. I secure the gloves with velcros then it's time to decorate. The yellow glove has brown bracelets, so I cut out very thin strips of tapes, which are then painted brown. Then I decorated them with glitter glue to make them look like there are gems embedded in them. For the brown glove, I attached a long strip of black tape. So anyway, I guess the point I'm trying to make is that I got a few projects I'm contemplating about. The ship, the castle, Evie's collections, the voodoo house, all of these things I know very little about. So I'm planning, learning, and instead of trying to do them myself outside of these videos, I thought it would be interesting to do them with you guys. It's not going to be perfect, I've never done any of these things before. Lots of things are being planned out. A little different than before, I guess. So here's the end result. This is our gill. Whether he looks like the real gill or not, I guess it doesn't matter. This is our version now. Thanks for watching!